Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello guys, welcome to the channel I hope you guys are having yourself a wonderful day In today's video we'll be reacting to uh, Indonesia village food um, As suggested by brother Rabba Bank uh, Ikal Thank you very much brother Rabba Bank for suggesting it uh, I always read your uh, comments, they're always supporting, uh, supporting So thank you very much for all your uh, loving uh, love and support and as well as making the suggestion for uh, this video for those of you who are new and who happen to come across uh, this channel and this vi uh, video for the first time i'd like to welcome you guys to the channel i upload videos every day so if you guys like uh, the content as well as the channel and want to be part of this journey please consider subscribing to the channel and turning notification on so you're notified when new videos uploaded stay tuned guys we'll be right back back guys we're gonna get started with the video momentarily and at the end of the video i'll be sharing with you my observation and reactions so please make sure you stay until the end now let's get started Welcome to Chopstick Travel, I'm Luke Martin and today we have another episode from Indonesia. Today we are in Bukit Tinggi in the highlands of West Sumatra and in this episode we're going to be showing you some classic Minangkabau foods at some restaurants here in Bukit Tinggi but also we're going to be going to the market doing a little bit of shopping for some ingredients and then taking them to a local village to have an authentic Minangkabau style village meal. It's gonna be a really great day. It is absolutely beautiful here, so make sure to stay tuned until the end because you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. So let's go. So we've come to kind of downtown Bukit Tinggi to get some breakfast. We were having something called Katupek Kapau. So we were in the market looking for the Katupek place. <laughs> this place is cool. Look at this. We are at the little breakfast joint. It's directly inside of the vegetable market and it's just really tight quarters in here. And they're serving katupek kapau, which is a type of Indonesian salad. It's a mix of all kinds of interesting ingredients. So on the top here, we have these little crackers, uh, which are pink. And then we've got some mi, which is the uh, noodles underneath, some shredded cabbage. There are some cassava leaves. There is a boiled egg, get some of those crunchy little crackers. Try that. Mm. Mm. This is really good. It's really hearty and really flavorful, like full of flavor. Completely coats your mouth because of that peanut sauce. It's almost like a peanut butter, but I love it. It's so good for breakfast, actually. So I just had a very happy discovery and that is this jackfruit that's hiding down here. So here in Indonesia there's jackfruit in all kinds of different things. Oh, I might have to take the whole thing, it's kind of sticking together. Mm. Mm. So creamy, so soft. When they cook it down like that, it tastes so good. Wow, that was a good breakfast and this is such a cool little spot really tight quarters right in the vegetable market. Love the atmosphere and food is also really good. Check out all the different varieties of these limes. There's little tiny ones like this. There's some that are kind of lumpy. Of course, regular ones, yellow ones, orange ones. Oh man, so many kinds. I've never seen anything like that. So since we're having a village meal later today and we're in the market now, we're gonna buy some of the ingredients to cook with later. There's an abundance of ingredients. We're making a few different types of dishes. 
So let's see what we can get. We are at the shop that's selling all these different kinds of pastes. And I guess what you can do here is just tell them what you're cooking. So tonight we're gonna to be cooking jackfruit rendang. So we told them we wanted a rendang mixture. So she took a bunch of different pastes. So garlic paste, uh, chili paste, um, onion paste, and then candle nut paste couple different spices and she just mixes it up into her own blend here and that's what we're gonna cook uh, tonight with the rendang so it really saves a lot of time you don't need to grind down those fresh ingredients and it's such a colorful cool little shop too Another dish we are making is jenkel gule. Jenkel are these right here. We just bought um, a, a big bag of them actually, and uh, they've got two different kinds. One is an older jenkel, which works better for the gule, so that's the one we got. So next up is this right here. This is really cool. This is called langkot langkot, and it's all of the ingredients similar to what we just did with the rendang, but this is for the gule. So it's got um, galangal inside, lemongrass, kaffir, lime leaves, turmeric, all kinds of different things, and it's wrapped up in this little packet. So it's just uh, easy to cook when you get home. That's so cool, I've never seen anything like that before. So now we are heading into the seafood portion of the market and that is because we are cooking something called Assam Pade and we need some fish for that. We are up in the hills here in Bukit Tinggi. There's still an abundance of fresh seafood and lots of friendly locals. So we just bought some mackerel, about a kilo of mackerel for that asam pade. Really excited to try that dish. So now we need some jackfruit for that jackfruit rendang. We bought the rendang spice mixture, but we need the jackfruit. So we are buying jackfruit now. We are going to be buying a young jackfruit, which is better for the rendang. Um, but she also has these, which are the old jackfruit. She just gave me some of the fruit to try. Mm. Yeah. It's kind of bitter on the outside, but then the inside is very, very sweet. Yeah, that is tasty and good. <laughs> we have the spices, we have the fish, we have the jackfruit. That's just about everything. Oh, the jenkle too, I almost forgot. But we're also gonna get coconut milk, but we'll get that in the village that we are doing the cooking later. This market is so cool. It is so vibrant and the locals are so friendly. What do you think of this market? Oh man, this market's amazing. There's no rhyme or reason to it. There's just stuff everywhere, but everything's fresh, everything is cheap really cool. Heading to the upper market to find a dessert called Ampyang Dadia. We are in the little shop that is serving Ampyang Dadia and I have one of the main ingredients right here and it's not bamboo, it's what's inside this bamboo and that is water buffalo milk. So actually this is the milk from the water buffalo that is milked first thing in the morning before the calf has milked. And then it is put inside this bamboo, left at room temperature for one day to kind of ferment and it's just stored right in this bamboo and you can see it in there. It's not going anywhere. It's almost turned into like a yogurt or almost like a cheese even. So that's gonna be mixed with some other ingredients for the Ampyang Dadya. So he started by soaking some rice husks in hot water. Then he tops it with that fermented water buffalo milk. Then he pours in quite a bit of brown sugar syrup, sprinkles a little bit of coconut on top, and here we have the final result. And let me tell you, 
that stuff smells really sour and strong. I haven't smelled anything like that since Errol in Mongolia. Um, if you haven't seen those episodes, uh, definitely go check them out. But let me give this a try here. Which is actually not nearly as strong a flavor as it is a smell. You can definitely taste a little bit of sourness, but it's really creamy, almost like a clotted cream. And then it's really sweet from all that brown sugar syrup that he poured on top, a little bit of coconut, and then those rice husks kind of just feel like oatmeal, same texture, no, no flavor really. It's not as bad as I thought because the smell is really strong. does remind me a little bit of the, some of the stuff we were having in Mongolia, but overall, very nice with that brown sugar syrup. Not my favorite dessert, but it wasn't bad. So there's one more thing we want to try in Pukitinki before we head to the village, so we're going to drive there right now. So this is our next stop here. It's famous for their dock and just check out the scenery here. It is beautiful at the base of this canyon. Let's go try some dock. We have our duck and this looks absolutely incredible. I was reading about this place online and all I wanted to do was eat it when I was reading about it and now I'm here and it just looks even better than I could have imagined. So here it is, this is the duck and you can see that green chili sambal just coating the outside of it, so much of it. And we've got two of the ducks and then this beef curry too with big chunks of fat Looks like maybe some of the beef is dried or maybe all of it is dried and it's in this beautiful, rich coconut-based curry. Then over here, just some cucumbers. All right, I'm gonna go right in for the duck. Oh, it's actually kind of cold, which I wasn't expecting. So let me rip off some of the meat and then get some of that green chili sambal and then put that on my rice and try it. Mm. Even though it's served cold, it actually is kind of refreshing that way. The duck meat is super juicy and just fall off the bone tender, but it's all about that sambal, that green chili sambal on top. It's actually got a slight bitterness at first to it, which I wasn't expecting. Definitely spicy. All right, next up I'm gonna try some of this beef with this beautiful gravy. Pour that on my rice, just a small piece of beef here. Let's try that. Mmm. Mm. You can taste the coconut milk in there. It's definitely not as spicy as the duck. That beef, I'm not sure if it's dried or maybe it was it's cooked a little bit too long, but it's got a chewiness to it. That's well, also very good, but definitely got to give it up for the duck. So we are right behind the duck restaurant. Here are the ducks. I don't think these are the ones that they're cooking though. That was some really tasty duck. Kind of feel bad saying that in front of them. But just check out this area here. It is absolutely beautiful. All these rice fields, rice paddies. We're going to head now to the village. It's gonna be a little bit of a drive. Think about an hour, hour and a half. All right. We've made it to the village. That was about an hour and a half, maybe a little bit longer. And it was beautiful coming in here. This is called the Harau Valley. All these massive mountains around. Very simple village life. We're gonna go meet the family, give them the ingredients now.
This is a big piece of bamboo to pull this one out of the tree. This is the young jackfruit, which is perfect for the jackfruit red dong. Whoa, look at how sappy it is on the top. Wow. So she also has a mature jackfruit here, which she just cut up to let us try. This one's good for the fruit, not so much for cooking. Let's try it. It's almost got like a banana flavor with like a slight durian flavor too. And then the texture is not like either of those. It's very firm, almost crunchy. Mm, that's tasty. That jackfruit is really, really good. It is almost like banana when it's fresh out of the tree like that. So we're also going to be making that coconut milk that we need for cooking all the different dishes. So fresh coconut water right inside this freshly opened coconut. I love coconut water. Oh, wow. That's so nice. <laughs> so this is the part we're going to be using to make the coconut milk, all that white flesh on the inside. <laughs> It's like a loaf of bread. Yeah. <laughs> We're having a mini fruit feast. Now we've got sour sop, which is one of my favorite fruits. So good. Mm. Oh, that's so good. I don't know if I've ever had it that fresh. It's like a little bit sour, but very sweet at the same time. Okay, we have some more jackfruit. We've got the coconut milk. We're heading back into the kitchen. This place is so cool. Spicy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sambal? Yeah, I do. So they are just prepping all of the ingredients, making sambal using fresh chilies, some garlic, and then just a rock and a stone plate to grind at into a fine paste. Then they are also grinding up the coconut meat to make that coconut milk and uh, different ladies cutting up onions, cutting up that young jackfruit, just getting all the things prepped for cooking. <laughs> <laughs> so the first dish we've put together is the asampade, which we're going to use the fish for. They're cooking it on wood fire. She added in all kinds of ingredients, starting with that sambal, lemongrass, tons of onions, lots of different herbs that I didn't recognize, and uh, it's going away behind me here. It smells really smoky and good, and it looks like it's gonna be spicy. <laughs> One key ingredient for the Assam today is tamarind, so we just threw some tamarind in there and that's going to give it the Assam, the sourness. <laughs> So the final ingredient for the asam pade is those mackerel that we bought at the market this morning. They kind of cut them into quarters and then shove them right in that soup and that's going to boil away now. That's finished. Just going to cook. <laughs> <laughs> mm. oh. 
Good. <laughs> yeah, tastes good. <laughs> Trying the Assam Pade. A little bit sour. You can definitely taste the seafood in there. And not too spicy. <laughs> So now we are moving on to the jenkle. She started by boiling those jenkles down for about an hour and then kind of smashing them, flattening them out. And then the base of this uh, jenkle dish is using a different type of sambal, which she included a little bit of ginger, a little bit of turmeric, and garlic and chili, of course, too. And now she's just um, mixed the grinded coconut with some water and then getting that milk, that coconut milk for the base of this curry, this jenkle goulet. The jenkle goulet is just about done. We added in that coconut milk with all of those ingredients, then threw some jenkle in there. And actually they went out to the garden and grabbed some cassava leaves because it goes really well with this dish. So that's just boiling away here. So while we were waiting for the food to cook, we heard a durian drop in the back garden and we ran out to grab it and actually it has a big chunk missing from the outside and apparently that's a squirrel trying to get at it and that's actually a good sign because the squirrels can find which one are the sweetest, they smell it. So I've got it here, let me try it out. Mm. Oh yeah, that was very sweet, very creamy. Oh man. So our third and final dish is the jackfruit rendang. She started with a third different type of sambal, so different ingredients than the other two sambals. However, of course, using chili, this time with onions, garlic, salt, and then added it with coconut milk, some kaffir, lime leaves, and then that bag of paste that we got from the market this morning. And this is going to cook away with the jackfruit for about three hours. So we get a little bit of a wait. I think we're gonna explore the village a little bit. So she just tasted the rendang mixture, noticed that it was missing something, headed outside and grabbed some lemongrass, threw it in the pot, and that is the way to cook rendang, fresh lemongrass right from the back garden. Because the rendang is a little bit tricky and we have to cook it for a long time, we are using gas to cook the rendang. But they have gas here, but they chose to do the other two dishes on the wood fire just because it tastes better that way. So one really interesting tip about cooking rendang is you need to stir constantly the mixture of coconut milk with all of those different herbs and spices until you see the oil start to release from the coconut, that is the time to put um, your other ingredient in, whatever it may be. This time we're using young jackfruit, but you can use chicken, you can use beef, you can even use potato. So we've got the jackfruit in, it's cooking. I think we're gonna wait for a little while, even though I really wanna eat this right now. It's time to go check on how the rendang's doing. All right, the rendang is done. It looks 
so good. You can see that it's got that rich brown color now after being cooked down. So I think it's time to sit down and we're all gonna feast. I have my plate assembled. We're sitting outside. It is time for dinner and I am so excited to try these dishes. We have several dishes, but the three main dishes that we saw them cook are here. So the first is the jankol with cassava leaves goulet. And then over here we have the asam, asam pade, but it's also known as asam pedas, but here in Minangkabau it's called asam pade. And then we have the rendang jackfruit, which just looks insanely good. I'm gonna have to save that for last even though I really don't want to but let's try some of the cassava leaves with the jankol goulet first <laughs> oh yeah mm. oh, man. the jankol has got kind of like a crisp bean texture and then you can really taste that cafe lime leaf and lemongrass coming through there very soft and then that cassava leaf is just soaked with the goulet sauce that's really good. Next up, we try some of this mackerel that we got the market this morning with the asam pade. Try to not get any bones if I can. And then some of the rice with that sauce. Oh yeah. Mm. That fish is so flaky. You can taste that sour tamarind in there. All the sambal, a little bit spicy, definitely. But man, that fish tastes awesome. Super fresh. All right, last but definitely not least, the rendang jackfruit. I'm going to grab a big bite here. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. That is insane. It is just coated in that rendang sauce. You can feel it. It's got this interesting texture to it, almost like a little bit gritty. You can taste the coconut, so rich with the coconut, and then the lemongrass, and then that jackfruit literally feels like beef. It's got that meaty texture to it. It's an incredible ingredient that can be cooked like that. Wow, this is, this is a meal to remember, and I gotta give it up for this jackfruit rendang. This is like the ultimate Minang Kabao food. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> this very well may be the best dish of the trip to Indonesia so far, this jackfruit rendang. I'm just in love. I've gone back for, I think, four servings already. Mm. It is just so good. The way that young jackfruit texture keeps when it cooks, it stays firm so it feels like meat. It feels like beef, exactly. And then just the flavors coming from that sauce are just out of this world. It's a little bit spicy, it's a little bit sour, and it's a little bit sweet. And then it's just aromatic with that coconut. It is unreal. Mm. Well, that was definitely worth the wait. I'd have to say that's the top meal of 2020 so far. In particular, that jackfruit rendang. How good was that, Sabrina? Oh my gosh, this might be one of the best dishes I've ever had. Just I agree. Jackfruit Brenda, that's amazing. So good. I love it. <laughs> and the fun never stops here in the village. They just invited us to go fishing in the little pond out back here, so let's try it out. Wow, guys, that was an uh, interesting video. I was uh, full at the beginning. By the end of it, I got hungry. And I was surprised because he picked the fish as well as I think it was like a bean and then the jackfruit. And I thought he's probably going to eat more of the fish because it's meat, but he enjoyed more of the jackfruit, subhanAllah, which, uh, which, says, which says a lot about the ingredients that are used to make the, the jackfruit rendang that he said. And, uh, you know, he, he talked about it so much that it actually made me hungry now. I wanted to try it. But some uh, really, really interesting uh, dishes. You know, I've, I've tried jackfruit, I think maybe once or twice, and it's actually pretty flavorful. I, but I would have never thought to actually use it in a dish, uh, especially being the star of the dish, like the main thing in there, right? So, and uh, the city or the village that he's staying is almost super, super beautiful. It's in a valley, mountains on both sides. Um, and uh, yeah, like that, that dish looked really, really good, guys. Now, I can't wait to inshallah try uh, one day jackfruit ran dog and one of the other dishes that he tried was that uh, buff um buffalo water buffalo um like a dessert 
um, I used to drink water buffalo milk like in, in, in Pakistan when we were there and it was actually really really good but I've never had it like this way that where he said that he, they let it sit for a day or so and then they use that in the snack so um, that looked pretty uh, interesting and uh, overall like all the dishes looked uh, pretty cool and uh, all of them looked like you know a lot of spices chilies were used because i know indonesians eat spicy foods um can't wait inshallah to visit as i've said to, to you guys in the past inshallah once i hit a million subs i'm going to be uh, taking a trip out to indonesia malaysia uh, turkey as well as bangladesh so if you guys uh, could support the channel uh, that would be amazing if you guys like this uh, video please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and if you'd like to recommend for me to check out another video please put in the comment section below as always thank you very much guys terry like i say for all your love and support i hope you guys have yourself a wonderful day take care of yourself and your family and inshallah i'll see you guys in the next video take care and wassalam